Hi, I'm Frank Spear. I want to welcome you to this blog. This is part eight of our ongoing series on anterior temporization. And what I want to talk to you about in this particular segment is the intraoral contouring of anterior temporaries. There'll be times that you will make a temporary and the patient comes back and there's something they don't like about it that they want changed. Now certainly you can remove the temporary and make adjustments, but it's much nicer if you don't have to. In addition, especially if it involves length, um, you might want to have some ways of trying out the changes before you actually adjust the temporary to that new length. So let me walk you through the patient I'm going to use in this segment. Um, he's a young man who fractured his anterior teeth in a traumatic accident. He fell off a bicycle. And if you look, what he really needs is he needs some length added to his teeth. So my treatment plan was pretty much to do what you see in that outline. Extend the length of the centrals and laterals so they're level with the occlusal plane. Now, the right lateral and both centrals have endodonic, been endodontically treated and they're actually somewhat discolored. In addition, he has uh, an occlusal issue that we're going to have to deal with. So he's having some orthodontics done to retract lower anterior teeth. And finally, once the orthodontist had the lower anteriors in position, we went ahead, prepared the teeth, used some opaquer to cover some of the really darkest areas, and then placed our temporary. And the temporary really lines up with the posterior occlusal plane in the canines. In other words, it's a pleasing smile line. The problem was he immediately had phonetic problems. He was having a difficult time with his S sounds. Now, there's a lot of different issues about speech. There's F and V sounds, which is typically the length of the maxillary anteriors relative to the lower lip. And there's S sounds, which is the relationship between the maxillary anteriors, mandibular anteriors, and the tongue. And then there's the D sounds and TH sounds, which have to do with the lingual and the cingulum. He was really struggling with his S sounds. For me, what I know is that I typically don't want to adjust anything for at least four weeks because we know there's a fairly rapid adaptation. The challenge was at the end of four weeks, he was still having major problems phonetically. And he came in and he said, point blank, the teeth are too big, they're too long. So now comes the issue is we want to start shortening them. I want to make sure I shorten them in a controlled way. They look good and then we try it again phonetically. For me, the, the tool I use the most to help with that is a marking pen, a black marking pen. And what you see is on the left side, the left central lateral canine and premolars, I've actually taken a black marking pen and I've adjusted the length, if you will, by blacking it out. Now I can look at that left side and if I like the left side, I can then replicate the right side, but I do it with a <clears throat> black marking pen so I can really control how much we're taking off. If you just start arbitrarily shortening these teeth with a burr, you have no idea how much you're actually taking off or are you doing it level. So I always do the left side first or the right side first, leave the other, so you have a comparison visually. If you like what you did on the left, now you can black out the right side. And now what I want to do is show you how to actually then shorten the teeth and then reshape the embrasures. And in this case, it's going to be shortening the canines and the premolars as well, because if I just shorten the incisors, I'm going to start to get a bit of a flat or a reverse smile line. So I actually want to maintain that curvature, if you will, um, so I'm not doing it as simply just changing the, the central and lateral incisors. So here's a video of using the black little marking, Sharpie marking pen. Um, we always joke that it's a sterile Sharpie pen, but of course you all know that we can't do that. And now what I'm doing is using a rubber wheel. This is a Brassler gray ceramic pre-polishing wheel in a straight hand piece. And I'm shortening by taking the black away. So my first adjustment is literally take the black mark away. You'll see I'll even use it to do the cuspids and the premolars. I'll take the black mark away. So now I've shortened everything and now we can start putting that bevel back in the incisal edge because now the incisal edge is too thick because I've just shortened it. 
and then using discs in a contra angle, we can start to recreate the incisal embrasure form. And I happen to really like these little diamond discs that fit in the contra angle. And so recreate our embrasure between the centrals, recreate the embrasure between the laterals. And this is to me a really important thing so my final embrasure and contouring I do with the patient sitting up a bit and I stand in front of them. I'm looking straight down at him. When he's laying on his back, it's really hard to see aesthetics to me. So I do all of that final reshaping with him sitting upright. And this is what that temporary looked like after we'd shortened it. And then we'd put back in the embrasures and then polished it again using that rubber wheel but then you can go ahead and use some of the discs that you're used to working with with composites as well. So I, I hope that makes sense to you. It's a very controlled way of adjusting form in a temporary. Is do it with the black marking pen so you can really see what you're doing. Then remove just to the end of the black line. And then go back in and do your reshaping and your recreation of the embrasure. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this series up to this point. And I'll look forward to seeing you in a future blog.